Good morning and welcome to our online service. My name is Heather Thompson and I'm one of the parish wardens with St Philip's and St James, Dorridge and Bentley Heath. And it's really good to have you with us today. There are many advantages, you know, to not necessarily being together in a building. One of them is that you have the opportunity to sing, which is something we're not yet permitted to do when we're together. And the other one is it doesn't have to be Sunday when you go to church. However, we still look forward to being together as a church family. Please do join in with the service and uh, allow Almighty God to wash his love and his presence over you as you celebrate his name. Hi there, my name is John. I'm a vicar over in Harbour on the other side of Birmingham, but I used to be, up until quite recently, the curate at St Philip's and St James, Dorridge and Bentley Heath. And I just wanted to uh, record a video, a short video, a short message, just saying how exciting it is to see that works now starting on the site at St Philip's and uh, over the next few weeks and months that site is going to be transformed as you start phase one of that building project. Well done for getting that far and well done for all that's happened so far. I think it's absolutely amazing and exciting to see that you're at the stage in the project that you are at the moment. Really exciting and uh, looking forward to seeing the transformation of that site over the next few weeks and months. Um, it's amazing, not least because of the amount of money that's been raised so far by primarily by, of course, members of the church, but also the ways in which the project itself uh, has a heart for the local area, has a heart to see lives changed. It's not just about bricks and mortar, but it's about transforming the community of Dorridge and Bentley Heath. That's what drew me to the church as a curate and one of my uh, outstanding memories of Dorridge and Bentley Heath is of a church that is desperate to meet the needs of the community around it. And so I'm going to be praying over the next few uh, weeks and months and years for the project as it as it goes forward from now. I'm going to be praying particularly three things. Number one, as you embark on phase one and hopefully straight into phase two, my prayer is this, is that people will continue to catch that vision beyond the church, beyond the walls of the church, beyond the structures and the people of the church, the people in the community will catch the vision for what it is that you're trying to do for what it is we believe God wants to do and, and that vision will be caught by the community secondly I'm going to pray uh, that that will lead to an outpouring of generosity and giving that means that that funding for phase two mean uh, will come in and means that there can be a continuous um, development from phase one straight into phase two and that you can get on with the things and the tasks of the kingdom of God that I know you're desperate to see and to do and lastly I'm going to pray that through this project through this building project Dorridge and Bentley Heath will be transformed as a as a as a community and and the church itself becomes a beacon of light a beacon of life and a beacon of hope for Dorridge Bentley Heath and the surrounding areas so God bless you keep going it's exciting and I can't wait to see all that God does. Bless you. We gather together as the family of God at St Philip's Dorridge with St James Bentley Heath. Today we acknowledge God's presence with us and we pray for his spirit to search our hearts and our lives as he leads us into the presence of God. And that, that same spirit may enable us to call God our Father. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and so we celebrate God's glory and his majesty as we sing together. verses 12 to 17. I write to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you have known the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives for ever. Today we continue our readings in the first letter of John, a letter which is a love letter inspired by God to his church in the world. And in our verses from 1 John chapter 2 verses 12 to 17, John speaks of the church firstly as a fellowship, which as we thought of a few weeks ago is a close, intimate sharing of life together. But also in these verses, John speaks of the church as the family of God, an intergenerational gathering of the children of God, as children, as parents, as young people, including grandparents and the single and the married, younger and older, widowed, divorced, 
wealthy, poor, everyone loved by God the Father and everyone made in the image and likeness of God. It is in this diversity of the church that we begin to see and to learn for ourselves the truth of God from one another and in one another. In the family of the church, throughout our life of faith, we are disciples of Jesus, learners of Jesus. And as such, within the family of the church, we need to remain teachable and open and we especially need to be prepared to learn of God and Jesus from one another. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3, Jesus says to his disciples, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is saying you cannot have a place in the family of God unless you are prepared to learn and to live in a childlike love and trust and dependence upon God as your father in heaven. In these verses, in the first letter of John, through the children, we can see and learn forgiveness because of Jesus. From the fathers, we can see and learn knowledge of the holy and eternal God. From youth, we can see and learn the victory, overcoming the temptations of the world around us. From the children, we can see and learn what it is to love God as our Father in heaven. From youth, we can see and learn what it is to be strong because God's word lives in you. John recognises that all that through the that through living in the family of the church we can see and understand that there are two ways to live and that you really cannot live if you try to have a foot in both camps. As Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, no one can serve two masters. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Here in this letter, John says that living in the family of God, you cannot love the world at the same time as loving God. Love for the world is material and it will never truly satisfy because you will always be left wanting more and feeling that you've never got enough. Love for God more than satisfied because it's what we were truly made for. And ultimately love for God leads to a quality of life that the material world can never offer and can never buy. It is being in the family of God and the family of God's church that we can live in fellowship, in a close and intimate sharing of our lives with one another. And in that close and intimate sharing of our lives, we can experience the love that leads to life. Life not as we know it, but life as it was meant to be lived. Life in all its rich, generous, abundant and overflowing fullness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the family of the church. And we pray that we would be open to learn of you from one another. And that each one of us would continue on our journey of faith to that place where we can come to say that God is our Father in heaven and he loves us. And we pray that that love may be seen in us, in the lives that we live and the people we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As children of God, we turn to our Father in prayer. We pray for the world praying that we would recognise that all people are made in the image and likeness of God and praying that God's Spirit would inspire us to stand up for justice and to resist racism and prejudice in ourselves and in the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we pray for the church of Jesus, that we would recognise that we are members of the family of God and brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the church in Rwanda, Malawi and Aston. And we pray especially for Christians who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and our friends, for those we know and love, and especially for those who are in need. And we pray that we would reach out to them with the love of God. And we pray for their healing, for their wholeness and for their peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, thanking God for our families and our friends. We pray especially for our Building for the Future project, that we wouldn't build for ourselves alone, but for our friends and neighbours in Dorridge and Bentley Heath, and for future generations to be drawn into the life of the love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we gather all our prayers together as we pray the Christian family prayer, as Jesus taught us to say, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
as our worship draws to a close, we give thanks to God for our fellowship in the household of faith and in the family of God, whereby we can see and learn of God in one another. And so we pray for ourselves, we pray for those we love, and we pray for those who need our prayers at this time, asking for God's blessing. May God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and with all those you love and with all those for whom you pray. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We share God's peace today with all those whom we meet and with whom we share our lives. Amen.